in there. Well, in a few days again, uh, things are always different for me. I hope and trust they are for you as well. Things are changing. Or maybe it's we that are changing. Things aren't. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to give you the next in the cycle, uh, that really intense cycle of journals. This one is from June 18th, and it was the first of that day. Um, 10 minutes to midnight, and the Mayan day was one storm. And uh, let's, let's see what it has to say. Oh well, though I just uploaded a journal tonight, making it two uploads for the day, the push of energies in or around the heart is so strong, I simply must open a new journal to see what wants to be said. There's a real intensity here. I know more of you are journaling now, even if it's just that you're jotting down notes or insights and ideas. That's okay. It's a good start. Heck, it's how I started too, in a way. You know, I'd always written what I called my letters to God. Uh, that's how I journaled. Uh, my journals would always start, Dear God. And that started quite young. What I hadn't been doing though, is writing down the experiences I'd have. So quite a lot happened before I ever got around to that. And at first it was just short notes with the date. There wasn't the special alchemy back then with it. Not with those notes anyway. Uh, it was just that these experiences were were special, not the run-of-the-mill thing, and things I didn't understand, so and unless they were written down, well, memory even now isn't my best trait. And it's so strange because I could always memorize pieces for the piano and not need the music to play them. Go figure. Where the real alchemy lies, though, is just in exposing to yourself what's there in heart. Now, it may sound crazy now, but if you follow through and, and begin journaling, I know it will prove itself to you. Today, too, I can better understand much of what was pure mystery to me back then. Now, nowhere near all of it, mind you, just some. For instance, this alchemy I keep speaking about, what is that? One thing that's much clearer to me now is just why it is that these things won't reveal themselves to you in conscious thought. You can sit and think or even ponder until the cows come home. And it will only take you so far, at least that's my experience. There's something quite special about taking up pencil or pen and paper and, and just beginning to write. Just like these journals, I'd advise anyone to write in stream of consciousness style letting whatever wants to flow through get written down. In other words, don't edit anything out. Just let it all flow. Don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about anything. Now the magic here is that this somehow enables a flow that goes deeper than the conscious mind unaided can reach. While in the beginning it may well be the mind's stream of consciousness you start out with. At some point, you get down deeper inside. You make contact with the capital H heart. 
it's that flow that you're after. So all of your other work, self-observing and getting some breathing space between you and the mind pays off here. One of the most precious abilities I treasure is the one that helps me distinguish what aspect of being is operating at any point, whether it is the mind, the heart, or even the body. Both body and mind have their own needs and desires, their own preferences for how they'd like certain things to turn out. And they will work toward their chosen ends. It's up to us to be able to spot them at work. So that breathing room is quite special. Without it, without being able to step back from mind especially and quit identifying with it, I don't see how you'll be able to get into and trust a pure heart flow. Mind will always be suspicious of it. And if you identify with mine, then you may think it's heart being suspicious. Do you see? So all the other journals that guide you into stepping back and away from thinking that you are the mind, instead into recognizing that you have a mind, will also benefit you in this journaling. It's not as if you can go after just one thing and manage to master that in a vacuum. Now, I haven't found that things work that way, but instead, it takes a good bit of mastery in this or that area to support what you choose to pursue. In other words, there are what amounts to prerequisites, which is rather funny, really. There are no limits, however, so these prerequisites could well have been accomplished in some other embodiment, one of those other lifetimes. The thing then would be to gain access to that. So please don't place any kind of limits on what is possible. It's best to discard all of those right at the outset and I tell you what, that will give you some breathing space for mind because mind can't do that. As source, you, I, we have no limits at all. And while it's also the case that you're currently operating in human mode in 3D, that doesn't make you limited to that, oh no only to the extent that you believe you are. Now, I'll say that one again. You are limited only to the extent that you believe you are, and no more. Well, it becomes obvious then that eliminating old beliefs is very much in your favor to help both spur you along and clear out unnecessary roadblocks you inadvertently placed in your path. Remember, you, being the one who placed them there, you are in full power to also remove them. Let's adopt and practice a permanent attitude of taking our power back in all ways. Every day, provides numerous opportunities to shift that particular attitude. This alchemy of the journaling has much to do with empowering you to go well beyond the realm of the conscious mind. That minimal, let's call it 5 to 10 percent of the brain with which most of humanity identifies and in which they choose to abide. This, too, is an unnecessary limit that we transcend in the journaling process. So even if only for those few minutes, transcendence is nice. It helps, too, to know that at your core, you are divine. 
the fact is that you are sores, but it's not necessary to completely accept that right off. It's enough to know that it's far more accurate to say you are consciousness or awareness than it is to say you are anything at all that's here in 3D, including body or mind. By simply knowing that your nature is actually divine, you are enabled to take much more of your power back. It becomes natural for the divine to be able to do so much more, to transcend so many more limits than can be transcended by anything human. As the divine, it becomes easier to span that broader area of mind, being mostly the subconscious and unconscious aspects, and at some point the superconscious as well. Are you getting the sense of this, the feel of it? Are you riding the wave of it in heart? Or do you find yourself centered in mind, listening to that chatter? How good are you so far at distinguishing in which mode you are operating? Does that ever make itself clear to you, perhaps in an odd moment? If you're practicing self-observation, this will start to occur. You see, there are some basic beliefs to have. There are some basic beliefs to eliminate. Beyond that, you discover that these form the, the foundation of your journaling practice and of your entering and living from heart. Certain things simply empower us. Now, I'm not saying you can't take whatever trek you choose and still arrive at this same destination. I'm just saying that these are those ways that smoothed and accelerated that path for me. Things all fit together rather nicely, too, you'll find. Your work on something you might have considered rather inconsequential may turn out to supply a really key piece. And the trick is that there's no way of knowing, not up front. Things reveal themselves in some sort of perfect or divine order. Watch for it. It's not ours to be ahead of that order as mind would so love to do, but rather to be content to ride along on the heart flow, which will get you there every time. We wind up going along seemingly on faith early on. So much we simply don't know, and it's really good to come to peace with that, to welcome it. An acceptance of not knowing, amounting even to a real comfort with it, is very much a blessing that supports further growth. As long as we continue to grasp at certain things, such as knowledge and mind, certainly, then this is evidence we're not yet ready for the next move, this letting go lets us know. It's a key piece that lets us know we're ready. Things won't lay themselves out properly until you are ready. You can try and try all you like, but there is no forcing this divine mechanism that's at work here, nor any understanding it to depth either. Along the way, certain things are revealed, and there's no way of knowing from what direction these revelations will appear either. So, at the beginning, there is far, far more of not knowing than there is anything else. This is often called the, or it can be called the empty cup, or emptiness. And in spite of what you may initially think, it is your dear friend. 
It will be your benefactor in so many ways, but you've got to come to terms with it first to fully accept it, eventually doing much more than that by embracing it warmly. And by this I mean an acceptance of what if the not knowing was to last for the rest of your lifetime. You have to be content with that to have really accepted it can't put any limits on things. You just, you, you accept what is. And uh, it's really good to stay out of the future, too. Another thing, don't worry if something seems unreachable to you at the moment. Just set such thoughts to the side. They are meaningless, or they can be. That depends very much on the self. It calls on your self-mastery, your ability to ignore the offerings of mind. If you can do this, then you will have relatively smooth sailing. If you cannot, then you will be accepting and placing all sorts of roadblocks in your own way until you wake up to this. Your path is very much smooth by your ability to step back from the mind and its offerings. I'm not saying don't think. That would be ridiculous. I am saying it's time to begin ignoring more and more of your thoughts. This is you taking your power back from ways you hadn't realized you'd given it away. This is you taking charge of your life. You're doing this in a way most people won't recognize or understand. So don't look for much support or understanding from your friends and peers. This path will set you at some point firmly on the throne within your own heart where you reign. You will be, you are as royalty, having charge, that kind of charge, over your life. Now stay out of mind with this. Okay, a lot of people are in mind thinking about how they'd like to arrange their life. You're not hearing me. I didn't say that. This is your right, but that's been taken away from you by the culture into which you were born or have now come via acquiescence. Now, this is not a problem. You'll also at some point find that there is simply no such thing as a problem. It's a false construct, a bad idea, if you will. It's a 3D way, it's a 3D perspective, okay? Be on 5D. Hear me from there. Everything brings blessings. There are no problems. Not when you are divine. So, be sure to remember who you are. Keep touching bases with. Keep occupying heart. In Heart Center, you discover that you already know these things. They will make perfect sense to you from there. One way to tell you're in mind is when things start sounding too good to be real. Things you hear in the journals. This is a good time to remember to just ignore mind and center back into the chest to Take up your place on your internal throne. It's not a matter of teaching your mind all of these neat, wonderful things. That's a pointless endeavor, actually. Now, can you see why or how it would be pointless? Mind is very much a creature for and of 3D. That's its domain, and that's fine. 
We're going well beyond 3D, however, so to stick with mind is to hamstring yourself in this journey. You'll just hobble along, and it won't be nearly as much fun as it could be. One of the hallmarks of being in heart, by the way, is having fun, is finding yourself quite often in simple joy or appreciation. It will be causeless, reasonless joy, or it'll be inspired by something. It's an emanation of an open heart. Now, at first, you might not touch down into it all that often, but it helps to know that it awaits you there. This is one of those foundation beliefs that it helps you to cultivate from the start. It serves you. So how are you doing at self-empowerment? And is it the divine self you're empowering or is it the mind? Now initially most of us can't easily tell the difference so don't be surprised or dismayed by that. Just persevere. Let your love for truth lead you on. For all of those who have found their way deep into heart, there is not the least need for any of these suggestions or directions. They are well able to just follow heart flow and to find whatever knowing they require within. That's going to be you soon if it's not already. They need none of this, but it surely helps to have it early on. Those who have found their way on their own likely took much longer than those for whom we are paving the way as light beings, lighting up the path for them. That's our joy, so we are following our bliss in this. Just know that it's all something you will discard later on. Makes it easy not to cling, huh? Stay out of mind, my friends, as much as possible. Just don't listen to it. One thing that will delight you is to discover how it is mind at the root of all of your problems and suffering all of your pain. I'm not asking you to believe that now, just sharing a look out ahead. Your walk will prove this for you. Meanwhile, it's one of those things that's nice to know, tuck in your hip pocket and ponder at times, in heart of course. It can help you find your discernment and hone it to a sharp edge even quicker. You, my friend, have all that it takes. And you carry it with you, much like a turtle carries her home. You are always well supplied for any need. But stick to heart with simply all of this. Pondering it from mind can tend to set you back. It certainly doesn't bring anything useful to the table in this transcendent work of going beyond the 3D realm. And all of mind's pondering goes on in 3D. Now there are those who condemn me rather roundly for stressing heart at the expense of mind. At least that's what they see. And maybe you think that too. Do you? Are you sure? What if you went back through this, but with another idea, a different belief? Maybe it wouldn't read or listen quite the same. Mind is very precious, you see. As many of you know, I took the time in this life to acquire along the way several university degrees, learning 
is a love and a joy I've indulged in all my life, especially earlier on. That sort of learning is an external thing, though. You go to those with the knowledge you seek, and you sit at their feet, so to speak, and soak it up. I always loved learning just for learning's sake, though. My teachers had no success in getting me to go for a particular degree. Instead, I took those classes that gave me the most enjoyment, taking whatever prerequisites were required to get to them. And that was my way until I had classes across the board in so many unrelated areas. I was loving it, too. It was in the Air Force where an education counselor finally convinced me that with just these nine hours taken in these three classes, I could have an associate's degree that convinced me to do it. It was okay. Can't say it was the greatest move, but it was what worked at the time. Anyway, that's back when I was living strictly from mind. Well, except when I journaled or prayed. I mean, you know, sure, I, I was in heart at times, or like when I read certain books, but it was all unconscious and unintentional. I didn't know what I was doing and nothing much about what was possible back then. I lived probably 90% from mind. Maybe, I don't know. Who am I to judge? We don't judge ourselves very well. When I look back at that now, I'm amazed. It's like a different person, a different lifetime. And I've got to tell you, even living so deeply in mind as I was back then, I saw such changes, such growth, that there were numerous times that I felt I had lived many lifetimes already instead of just many years. Much growth is possible, even when it's mostly from mind. What I see now, though, is that knowledge comes, as it were, by osmosis. It's internal now, an interior process, rather than seeking out anything external. The light of source is literally within, and within each of us, we are that. What I find is that by simply pulling up the old belief weeds as they would come to my attention, that inner light is enabled to shine brighter and brighter and reveal more and more. Neti, neti. Get rid of whatever you can. So, it's both driven from within and sourced within. All you desire and need, you will find that you actually contain. It's quite a shock initially, but that wears off a bit. You become a lover of source. That's how close, how deep the relationship is. And it already is, my friends. It's just a matter of uncovering that. So, anything you have within you that rebels or tries to knock down such ideas, look closely at that. That's all, just observe. Our beliefs, each one of them, carry blinders with them. And that's how they operate. You always believe a this at the expense of a that. That's just how it works. So start noticing this. As I said, just watch. Don't try to change anything. By sticking closely to heart and doing this watching, you will be taught from within by the divine. You too have that still small voice on which you can come to rely. Once you find your way deep enough into the silence of heart, of course, the 
takes a good bit of quieting down, of being internally still. You can be moving around all you want externally. You can still be quiet inside. I don't suggest we be in any sort of hurry. No, you will be, of course. But that will be strictly mind at work. And it's good to know this. It will help you observe wisely. You'll get better at distinguishing what aspect of being is at work. At its core, at its heart, the mind is pristine. It too is actually divine. There's not a thing in the world that is wrong with the mind itself. It's what's been done to it. The programming, the manipulation, all of that that we're dealing with here. That is what's in the way, actually. It's not the mind. It's just faulty programming. Once we get our garden of belief growing beautifully, nurturing in it only flowers and plants of our free will choice, having weeded out those planted there for us by others, we're in really good shape. It is then that we can begin to see how the mind can really shine. How it's a true asset to our journey, not a mistake, not a hindrance of any kind. So in a way then, I guess I may have to reconsider how I've been presenting this work with the mind. Early on, I thought mind itself was the culprit was the bad guy in the play. I've long since passed that point though, so when you listen to the really early journals, be sure to be aware of this so you too can see my growth out of that fear. What is at issue here is really just the belief garden. At least that's how it seems to me at this point. It's not mind at all, just first our relationship with it. We don't want to identify with it. And then what's been planted in it as beliefs. Mind itself is not the issue. How interesting. You don't know how surprised I was to be journaling these words, or maybe you do. I believe it was Ralph Waldo Emerson who said in his beautiful essay, Self-Reliance, that if his truth of today flies in the face of what he believed yesterday, then so be it. Be true to your now, to the truth as you perceive it in your now. Don't be loyal to yesterday's truth that won't suit you. No, it was fine for you then. It was perfect, in fact. But what has that to do with your now, do you see? It is vital that we be one-pointed, focused ever in the now here and deep within the heart of self. This is our point of power, my friends. Upon this rests our true throne of dominion. We are powerful beyond our wildest beliefs or ideas, but in truth, it is Source who is this powerful. It is in Source that this power resides, so it is crucial to identify with the real self at some point, hopefully early on. This is best done stepwise. That's part of what we design 3D for, this slowing down vibrations until they would manifest physically, thus slowing down time until things would seem to take a lot of it to mature. We wanted to savor the process. Do you see? Get back in there. Remember, 
Life is in the living of it, not in some fabled goal or destiny. Life is serenely poised upon the pinnacle, the precise point of the now here. In just this very moment, this very moment, this very moment, this very moment. I'm sure you see, you sense what I mean. Be in your now. It is your place of power, divine power. You are that. Yes, you are source. But you must also claim it. And there will be some pruning of your tree as you do this. You do that by pulling loads and loads of those weeds, those beliefs in anything contrary to truth. Truth itself is also something quite divine. It has a capital T. It too is not a thing of 3D, but can only shine a reflected light ray down into this realm. It is divine. That is what many, many hearts incarnate on earth today simply know. They are, we are, the lovers of truth, the light beings who shine with that light. We are truth. Remember Jesus' non-answer to Pilate when asked what is truth. It wouldn't have done any good to answer for the question was issued on the level of mind and mind cannot touch actual truth. It cannot even be expressed in any words. At best, words can only come close, can only give the flavor, the essence of that or point to it. Yet, your heart knows, friend. It knows simply all of this and so much more. We are source. To end, I want you to look at how this 3D is the backwards realm, seeming to have everything arranged upside down and a little backwards. Look at the word me and at the word we. Do you see? turn them upside down and they shift places. Me becomes we, we becomes me. That's actually pretty deep. Our language is littered with such hints, such threads that lead back to the divine. We are surrounded by them, ensconced in them. They are everywhere and not just in language either. Once heart vision opens, we begin to see everything differently. Finally, oh, finally, it's like we are on both sides of the mirror, making it that much easier to see the little goodies, the little tricks, the hints, the crumb trail leading straight back into heart. Welcome home, my friends. Don't wait for death or ascension or enlightenment or anything else. No waiting required. You have it all now, turtle-like. You contain it within. Just be open to this. Take your earnest heart and come in and explore. You will find that no one, not in all of time and space, has anything more special, more precious than you do. For the me is really we, and we are all one. As the Sufis express it, these eyes through which I hoped to see God are the eyes through which God sees me. 
I hope at this point you can see that is a heart saying. It only makes sense from our center point, from our throne. Thank you for listening, for sharing your heart and your light here. Namaste. Now, I have a PS and a PPS. PS. As we both see, it was very well that I followed that strong flow that was upon this heart at the start. Each journal, as it comes forth, is its own special jewel, its own precious gem. And friend, if, if you don't yet see or sense this, then please do find your way deeper within. You too have a divine decoding point somewhere inside that will enable you to perceive on these other dimensions. For that's what we're doing here. And then PPS, just noting something rather strange about the date and time of writing this journal. Oh, it was saved mistakenly as a June 19th journal. Yet the top line indicates it was written on 6-8. June 8th. Very strange, huh? Well, it turned out neither one of those was right. What saved me was including the Mayan day, which was from 618. Confirmation is in the date and time it was saved on the computer, which was 127 a.m. on 619. So it was started on 618. The time I jotted down as I began writing was just before midnight, 11 minutes before that. Now, while this looks like a strange set of coincidences, it is not. Not that I can wholly unravel it, mind you. I just don't believe in coincidence. I am grateful that all things come together so that between the date, both the date and times and Mayan day, it all came clear. I will be observing to see this one unravel and play out, things that make you go, hmm. After all, in more than four decades of writing these, I don't ever recall anything like this occurring. See you again soon.